Ever wanted to paint a miniature? Well today I'm going to show you the five simple steps you'll need to paint any miniature. Hey oh, Welcome to Paint It Plastic People. My name is Charles and I help aspiring and beginner miniature painters learn to save time and money by teaching them to paint fast and effective. In today's video I'm going to be talking to you about the five steps you'll need to paint any miniature. The first step is preparation and priming. Some miniatures come on sprues, such as Warhammer minis or higher end uh, complexity miniatures. Some miniatures come in little baggies that are disassembled as well. Games like Star Wars Legion do this, though they have shifted over to sprues in later years. And some miniatures come pre-assembled. Generally, most board games are like this. So if you're painting a board game miniature, you can just skip right on to the second half of this step, which is priming. There are three different ways you can prime a miniature. The first way is paint on primers. The second way is to use an airbrush if you have access to an airbrush. And the third way is the way I prefer, which is with a rattle can. Priming with a rattle can, you should prime outside. You shouldn't prime indoors unless it's extremely well ventilated. Even then, you probably shouldn't just due to the stink and fumes that will come from the rattle can itself. Even when you prime outside, you should use a pair of gloves so that way you don't get any primer on your hands while you're spraying and rotating your miniature to get all the angles. Also, you should wear a face mask just so you don't breathe in those fumes as well because those just can't be good for you. Now that you applied your primer and your paint is something to stick to, we can do a base coat. Essentially what we're doing here is blocking all the colors we're going to use for the rest of the miniature. You can be as sloppy as you like here, but just remember to touch up everything so that there's no overlap of a color on top of another color, unless that's something you're going for. Don't be too worried about mistakes at this point, because no one's going to be taking a miniature and examining it this close. I find base coating is one of the easiest steps, and it gives you a good sense of what your miniature is going to look like in the very end. Don't worry if it looks like hot garbage now, it's supposed to, and everybody's does, so don't worry about that. The third step is to wash and shade your miniatures. Now, wash and shade are interchangeable words used by different companies that make paint that mean the same thing. It's a paint that's very thinned down and will go into the recesses, folds, and under parts of your miniature to give your miniature more depth. This stuff takes a long time to dry, so you have a lot of time to kind of play around with it and don't have to worry about if it's pooling in unnatural places. The best thing you can do there is just move it around with your brush or you can take a dried brush and just soak up the excess. The key here is to just make sure it gets into all the recesses and all the cracks and folds. That way your miniature will really pop and you'll start to see that it looks even better now. And hey, if your miniature is just drying and you've got nothing else going on and you're getting some value out of this video, a like down below would be great. I'd appreciate it and I appreciate you. Step four is highlights. Now highlights is the most difficult part just because you have to be careful versus in the other stages you could just be kind of loosey-goosey. What happens here is you're taking the paint you had from before and you're reapplying it. But this time you're trying to avoid where the wash or shade went into the crevices and or into the creeks. This way you're giving your miniatures more pop. The best advice here is don't worry about it too much. This is just paint. It can always be reapplied, rewashed, re-highlighted. Don't worry about it too much. Just do your best. Now, if you're like me and you like to just get it to the table, you only do one layer of highlights. Though you can push the highlights further by mixing in brighter colors, adding different uh, colors to your miniature effect to get all sorts of different results, which are great. But if you're a new painter, I would just focus on getting one level of highlight done and having a finished product. Remember that a miniature that's finished and on the table is a heck of a lot better than a miniature that's still on your work table waiting to become perfect. Step five is to base and seal your miniature. What you're gonna do here is glue your miniature to the base if that needs to happen and paint the base as well. Now, you can also uh, do different uh, things like add terrain to the base or add grass or just do some interesting things 
or even take the miniature right off the base and make a diorama out of it. But don't worry about that now, just worry about just painting that base. And this is by no means the end of miniature painting. In future videos, I'm going to be discussing each one of these steps in a little more depth, going over different tips and tricks to help you improve your painting as well as speed it up. So if you like that, you can subscribe to my channel, you can leave a like, you can leave a comment down below, and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have. As well, you can share this video with your friends, other people who will be interested in this, or share it with your enemies. But honestly, you don't have to do any of that. Again, I'm a pre-recorded message. I can't make you do anything. So until then, remember, get it to the table and have a good day.